I'm Joey Pickard, German audio engineer and guitar player and today it's all about designing a modern metal tube amplifier. Part 2. Okay, let's first talk about the different sections of an amplifier. I have thrown a small picture to, together to explain it. Um, here we can see um, mainly the different parts of nearly every guitar amplifier. So we have a power supply of course uh, because we need different voltages and amount of current. Then on the left we have a guitar and the signal. So something has come out of here, out of uh, my <coughs> humbuckers in this case and um, has to be amplified. So this signal is very small, tiny, below one, one volt, maybe 100 millivolts peak to peak or something, depending on uh, uh, which um, uh, humbucker single call you are using, the output is higher or lower. Okay, now this small signal has to be amplified at first. This is uh, done in the really first preamp stage, so there is not a lot of distortion. It's maybe a bit of sound uh, generating uh, part, but uh, nearly, nearly just amplification to get that weak signal stronger and uh, with higher voltage. Okay, um, after that, uh, also inside the first part, there is a um, for the clean channel a bit of uh, signal forming maybe a second uh, tube stage where it's a bit bit of uh, of gain going a bit of crunch maybe something like that but for the clean channel that's it okay after that if we are using distortion or the lead channel of an amplifier then we need the part of the preamp that is doing this for us so we need a second third fourth, fifth or even sixth amplification state which is done with triode tubes in my amplifier so mainly every amplifier out there working with tubes in a preamp is doing that <coughs> with triodes. Not everyone but mainly the, the most. Um, okay this should be this the package of the sound forming and distortion part so there, that's where the gain comes from, but not where the tightness or the heaviness completely comes from. Um, and next we have to um, process this signal, we have to do equalization, which I would put into the preamp in this uh, if, if we talk in sections or in this boxes, it's in the preamp and then we are um, processing the signal for the effects loop, so maybe we want to put a delay or a noise gate on it, uh, an external effect, uh, so we need to uh, get lead or clean channel, in, not at the same time, but after we switch between that, this, um, on the same output, so the switching has to be done before that. And then we are going out of our amplifiers and into every effect that we want to and after that we are getting it back into our amplifier. This is done in the effect loop section of course and then we have to do something um, that is I put it in here, you can also put it uh, into um, the 
power amplifier section because without um, the phase inverter the power supply uh, the the power amplifier won't work we can see it later in the schematics so and i put it here because my schematics are designed like that so i have five documents where the different parts are designed in and then of course we have our power amp amplifier also with tubes and an output transformer um, in this case uh, the um, working class is class a b and it's push pull working we can see it later in the schematics okay now i think i hope uh, for everyone it's clear what we are talking about when i mention a preamp or a power amplifier and let's jump into the schematics i am using target target is a um, designing program for schematics for layout boards for um, even parts and i like it pretty much target 3001 is it here um, i like it more than eagle cad but that's only my thoughts about it okay let's start don't make things too long we get in in europe with a two th uh, 230 volts and we use a power transformer the power transformer that i use is this one from tube town no i don't want it now uh is this from tube town um yeah i don't know it yet but uh, the comments are really good on that uh, they are built in germany and you can see i took the data out of here for my schematics we have three secondary windings the first one is generating our high voltage the second one is generating our voltage supply for uh, the heaters of the tubes and the third uh, is uh, generation generating in this case um, voltages for um, transistor based uh, things like um, a digital reverb tank i put into it uh, or my effects loop so I'm trying out a bit here the effects loop at this moment I'm planning to build it up with um, with an um, MOSFET based um, input and output stage um, I know how to build it with tubes but uh, I'm interested in how this one works and if it will make a big sound difference so I'm putting it up here it won't um, affect the tube signal path in generating distortion or the tube, typical tube sound hopefully okay that's the power supply short um, a few details um, you should know how a bridge rectifier works if you want to understand why it works uh, here's a little help um, the signal is coming in the 230 volts 50 hertz cycle per second uh, signal or supply and uh, this is a sine wave mainly and this sine wave is put into a rectifier in this case diodes um, in this special case it's not a bridge rectifier typical from other power supplies with four diodes we are using the center tap of a transformator like this one here where the fuse is positioned and you can see it it's it is uh, attached to ground um, if you attach the center tap of a transformer to ground and then you will have a positive and a negative phase of this sine wave and you can put one diode each in the same direction you don't need the second diode to fully bridge, bridge rectify it because in this case the schematic is working only with the two and you can see what happens if we are behind that two uh, diodes the sine waves the negative sine wave is directed positive so we have a positive rippled signal and this positive rippled signal is going over our standby switch every amplifier that is uh, has a bigger um, wattage has a standby switch because the tubes need to warm up before you put on them the high voltage um, and when you put it on the rest of the layout or of the schematics then um, you will have capacitors and these capacitors are filling out the small spaces between the ripple in theory perfectly they are filling it out completely of course in reality they are not it's depending on uh, the size of the 
uh, capacitor. The first one is a 500 volts, uh, 100 microfarad uh, um, electrolytic uh, capacitor from JJ. And um, this one is not that big, but it's big enough for the power uh, tube section to supply it. Why this is so, we can talk later about it uh, at the schematics of the power tube section. Okay, finish for now. This should work. I'm generating out of the circuit uh, different um, voltages. The main voltage, the highest voltage is a 410 DC. Um, around, maybe it's a bit higher or lower. I don't know how it is um, perfectly adjusted later in the working circuit. So it's around that. And then I'm generating it. You can see it here, um, different voltages, different voltage taps. This is for um, for a reason of sound design. Um, this, the, the first and the second uh, tube uh, stage are getting lower voltages and we are getting higher and higher um, as um, further the signal moves through the whole, whole chassis. In, if you design an amp like this, you are mainly getting um, a bit opener, richer, but also um, dynamic and, and aggressive sound and a less compressed, dump, um, compact sound. So this is, this is the first sound design step in the schematics. Okay, the rest is basic electronic work. You can see here bridge rectifier. This is a discrete bridge rectifier, so you have every thing in, in rectifying you can find here. Oh, one special thing before we uh, get over. Um, the bias voltage. Bias voltage is a voltage that needs to be negative pretty high. This is supplying um, for the uh, power tube gates. Uh, for the gate 3 I think is it. Um, we need it to um, adjust the um, to, to, to adjust the working point of the tube. Um, we adjust the current that flows to the tube with that voltage, with the bias, and uh, every tube has a perfect operating point, and uh, to catch that point it is not fixed, it is adjustable uh, over a potentiometer. And now we are looking into, uh, ba back 30-40 years ago, this is um, a schematic of a Marshall amp, of uh, 1986, so mainly the grandfather of a JCM 800, not, not really, but nearly. Um, and you can see here a transformator with the center tap, two winding sides, the two diodes, like in my mine, and at one tap there is a resistor, a diode, and a capacitor, a resistor, a capacitor, then a resistor and a potentiometer. And in this case you can see the whole tube power section and we are supplying it to the gate at the cathode. Uh, so you can see there is mainly the same circuit as in my power supply. And the nice thing on this is if this tube, uh, this potentiometer fails and the, the contact is broken, then this whole voltage will get n very negative and will um, protect our power tubes uh, from overheat because um, it reduces the current that flows through the tube if an accident happens and the potentiometer fails or something like that. So this is a smart way to uh, adjust the BIOS. Okay, good for now. hope everything is clear for you. If not, ask in the comments. Next one. Uh, next one, because uh, the schematic is easier to talk about, uh, is the power tube section. So you can see up here at the UB plus A1. There we are getting our 410 volts from our power supply into the tubes. 
not really into the tubes. At first we are going through the output transformer. Why are output transformer needed? Um, in actual, in, in modern um, transistor or class D amplifiers or something like that, you don't have transistors because uh, uh, you don't have transformers because the transistors can operate together with the normal speaker load, for example, at 8 ohms. And the inner resistance of an amplifier has to be the same or lower. The, the, the lower the impedance of the amplifier is, compared to the impedance of the um, loudspeaker, um, the, the better controlled um, is the speaker and less distortion, less variation in changing the speaker. There are many points that are better if you have a low um, input uh, output impedance of your amplifier. And if we look at the tube, the tube is working at very high voltages with very low current and that means Ohm's law we are operating at mainly pretty high um, resistance so the inner resistance of an amplifier cir amplification circuit output circuit uh, with a tube amplifier would be way higher than the imp impedance of a um, loudspeaker if we have this match the totally voltage drop would at first mainly occur at the power uh, amplifier section and not at the speaker. That's the first point, uh, that's the first problem. And the second problem is, what do you think happens when we apply 410 volts alternating, sine wave alternating, um, into an 8 ohm load of a speaker? Again, Ohm's law. If you calculate that and you calculate the power that is resulting, you need a pretty heavy speaker to hold that power. It's um, above a few kilowatts that this small speaker, 12 inch, maybe Celestial Vintage 30, should handle. It won't work. And a second thing happens here we are splitting our vo positive voltages into two ways. You can see it like in, in, um, in the brown and the blue side. This is the wiring color of this transformator. Um, we're applying it to the 410 volts through that transformator to the anodes of the um, power tubes. 6L6s, not really 6L6s, 5881s. So like in the older Fender amps or older Mesa Boogie amps. I like this tube it's, it's not that high uh, wattage, it's a bit lower, but it's mainly voiced uh, like a 6L6 or it's sounding like a 6L6. It's basically the little, uh, the little sister of it. Okay, um, too much information on uh, different uh, points. Uh, let's stay at the output trans transformer 410 volts above here and 410 volts above here. Now the interesting thing is happening before we get into the power stage. So at this point we are getting two signals. These we are getting from the phase inverter. So we are getting each signal above here with a positive phase and down here with a negative phase. So this tube is acting exactly in the opposite direction in opening and closing the gates or the, the current flow through the tube as the other output tube. So if we are opened up here, so the current can flow, the 410 volts are flowing with a high current, the volts are not flowing, the current is higher, so the power is sucked here. The transformer will pass um, that current through the upper part to the brown wire and the transformer is going to do what the transformer is going to do if, a cur if the current is flowing, alternating. It is generating a man magnetic field and it is supporting the outputs, the output section, the winding, um, with that alternating field. And if we put there a loudspeaker, the alternating field at this moment, the current that is 
flowing more and less while our signal is positively applied to that tube. Um, the speaker will move because of that transformation with a nice voltage it can handle and the input, uh, the output impedance of that transformator coil will be lower, so low that it, it is working together with the speaker load like a normal, normal modern tran transistor amp. Not exactly like it but nearly. Okay, if we have now a um, phase inverted signal, the tube is um, closing. There will be a very very low or no current flow through the tube while the upper tube is performing a lot of current flow. And if the signal now changes because our side from the guitar is swinging in the other side, the waves are coming out of the side up and down and we are going to the downside of the sine wave. The phase inverter is supporting this input with a positive signal while the upper is getting the negative signal and the whole thing changes and now the down tube, uh, the downside tube is flowing a lot of current and the upper is closing and flowing. there is not a big current flow in the upper tube. And this is how, it, how the amplifier is working. So the output amplifier, this is mainly uh, in every um, high voltage uh, power amp, uh, tube power amp the same. Uh, you have a transformer with a middle tap and then you have upper and a downer this, the same supply voltage by the upper and the downer uh, tube and it is supplied with the phase inverted si signal one of the tube and so you getting the um, the form of the sine wave transformated and amplified with a high um, energy potential and you can support it to a speaker before that if we put a speaker on this point of the amplifier Maybe we can hear very, 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 very quiet uh, a signal, but mainly it won't come out anything because if we attach the speaker 8 ohms to a high voltage position, then um, with, with no transformer, then everything collapses. It's like a short circuit. Okay, this was a lot at um, not many uh parts of that amplifier i'm sorry i think i have to split that video up <laughs> i don't want it but uh, i think we do so last point at that power amp section um at first i'm using the same brand for the output transformer and then the transformer is supposed to handle 36 watts um, and has um, um, a middle resistance or an impedance of 4000 ohms. This is needed at 410 volts to get around 30, 33, 36 watts um, according on how much uh, DC voltage we are generating with the power supply really. So this would be the main output power, the maximum output power that I can um, get out of that circuit. Okay, really last point, our bio supply, the Minus 80 volt, yes, of course, I have a version that is not registered. Um, the BIOS negative voltage is supplied here. And as you can see, we are putting it into another potentiometers. This is um, done, this is not from the Marshall organ original design, this is done in a lot of um, hi-fi amplifiers or something um, to adjust for each tube that we are um, not consuming more or less current uh, for the working point. So if we have tubes that are uh, not perfect matched, the, so a set that is um, maybe just okay but, but not perfect matched, then we can adjust the um, the working point, the bias of each tube individually, so that we have a p 
perfect working amplifier. This is nice. This is mainly for hi-fi reasons uh, nice to get a very, very clean amplifier, output amplifier, but we can also use it to, to disadjust to get a not perfectly working power amplifier. And this is another point where we can do sound design. So if this one is, is working out of tune or, or out, out of a perfect uh, current, then we, we cannot do it over, overdo it, but uh, we can a bit adjust inside uh, of, of, of a range. And when we can get a bit of um, raw sound out of our um, power stage to add it to the preamp distortion which will sound uh, different and uh, make, an, make up a nice mix. Okay, so I think this is everything for uh, this episode. Uh, next time we're looking over the preamp and uh, the phase inverter uh, section and effects loop, a noise gate and the included reverb and after that I think it's time to get the hands dirty, get uh, the soldering iron uh, hot and uh, put together some parts. I hope you liked it. Um, do everything uh, a good YouTube customer is doing and uh, put everything uh, around this video uh, with likes, dislikes or, s or comments or, or <laughs> what you like. Um, I'm Joey Picard. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.